I don't know if that's a term, but I'm going to go ahead and use it. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Francis Bernard, thanks so much for taking the time to join Blog and the Boys. Hey, thanks for having me on. So um, you did an Instagram Q&A this past weekend, um, answered a lot of questions, obviously, about who you are. And a lot of people really liked it. I think people really love it when their favorite players get a chance to do this. I don't know if you know this. A lot of people love you um, and, and really root for you and, and your story. And so uh, we figured what better opportunity to give people a chance to get to know you than to kind of sit down, have a nice little chat. Um, and so I'll start here, uh, Francis, because uh, I know you're a busy guy. We're talking on Tuesday, April 6th, your birthday is coming up is that right thursday is your birthday yes sir thursday is my birthday yep eight so uh turning 26 is that right 26 yep what'd you ask for what do you like you, ps5 like i figure you probably Man. have something what, what'd you ask for <laughs> um so my wife i'm really I'm, i really got into reading this off season and so i want i just want another book um, just to kind of grow my, my mind and stuff. Um, but other than that, you know what I, I want? I want a vacation. I want a vacation to Hawaii. And so hopefully my wife is looking for that. But uh, hopefully she's in it. I'm going to Hawaii in July. But that would be awesome. Well, hit up your boy Bradley and I for some Hawaiian suggestions. I'm sure he's got, you know, a couple of places for you to check out. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I want to exactly. ask you, I want to start here. Um, do you know what you were doing on your birthday last year? I don't know exactly what you were doing, but I know a little bit, um, not to freak you out. But do you remember the day at all, your birthday last year? Do you remember the day at all, your birthday last year? Dang. Oh, I was, uh, I did, I recorded my pro day on my, on my birthday last year. That's right. So I want to quiz you on a couple of things. You also, you did a radio hit. You're doing an interview right now. Do you remember who you did the radio hit with last year on your birthday? Sheesh. No, I don't. I can't, I can't even remember. Was it with y'all? It was not with us, but you did a radio hit with Sports Talk 790 in Houston. They're our friends. Um, so there was a former, at that point in time, only one former NFL player that was also on the show. So I'm looking at a tweet, and it's got, like, you know, their lineup for the day. Uh, Francis Bernard, you joined them at 10.15 in the morning. At 10.30, Anthony Jennings joined them, obviously now another NFL player. At 11 o'clock, so 45 minutes after you, there was another NFL player that used to be in the NFL. Uh, do you know who? you have any guess who it was dang not, not, now i'm thinking about i do remember um no i can't remember though it was barry church formerly of the dallas cowboys obviously uh barry church does some stuff for dallascowboys.com has in the past so look at that like that was kind of the beginning of your path to the dallas cowboys even though maybe you know nobody realized it at the time but you mentioned it you tweeted out your pro day numbers and the video uh so i want to quiz you on this because it's only it hasn't even been a year actually it's been 363 days so if you don't know this well you know that's kind of on you uh but your 40 time what was it I ran a four six five. I know this though. Four six five. My shuttle was in the four twos. Well, four two what though? Or, you gotta uh, you gotta give me the whole thing. Four two what? Dang. Uh, four two eight. I think four two eight. That's right. You're two for two, and, and your three cone. Seven one oh five. I think. Three for three. Look at that, dude. You yes, remembered sir. it like completely perfect. So, yes, um, that was a really. Obviously, a year ago at this time, the pandemic was like brand new. We were all still really figuring things out. Um, but what did you get advice to to put it out that way? I mean, obviously, because there was no combine, things like that. Like, did, or the combine had already happened, rather. Excuse me, but like you couldn't really, you know, show yourself off in front of you know lots of people. So, was that something that you consulted with somebody? Some advice you got? Like, hey, to just put this out on Twitter and whoever wants to can watch it. Yeah, uh, my agent had advised me to do it, and then. Uh, I think we had seen some other dudes do it. And so, um, you know, it was kind of just the way to do it at the time. So we can get a video out to NFL teams. And I really wanted to do it with uh, Zibic Sports because Zibic Sports, that same electronic system is the same electric electronic system that I used at the combine. So I just really wanted to use their system to go out and show people like, you know, I was hurt when I was at the combine, but I just mm -hmm. decided to run out the combine anyways. And so I wanted to rerun on, the, on that same laser. Um, and so really that was, that was the main reason why we went to Zivic Sports and did all that stuff. But yeah, it was, uh, a unique experience and, you know, one for the books for sure, because <laughs> man, it was like, we didn't even know if we we're going to do a pro day or do anything like it. And, um, 
it was it's funny because even when on that day part we were supposed to have a camera crew and mm-hmm. the camera crew canceled out on us and so we ended up doing everything off of iphone so it was like dang like you know it still worked out but it was just it was a crazy time yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it again, and there, there's a level of professionalism to this. Um, like, you, you're making it sound like you just got a tripod and set the iPhone up, but like, there's there's some like editing done here, and like, it it kind of looks like the combine, like it has the the ta- uh, the ticker at the bottom with like different data and stuff like that. Yep. Um, so I think it worked out really well. Um, so you know, good job in that capacity. I I you know, this last year, obviously, your only year in the NFL so far um, has. You know, I, I always feel like when, when rookies finish their rookie season, this is like your first chance to breathe, right? And obviously this past year is a really different example, but when you finish your last season in college, whenever you decide to declare, you're focused on the draft, focused on the draft, and, and you can't like, I, I imagine you're probably scared to do anything, you're scared to tweet anything because you're so worried that something's going to be taken the wrong way, then you get drafted or you sign with a team and you're starting the whole run, right? You're jumping in, you want to learn the playbook, you want to you know make the team, you want to you know, make the roster and things like that. So when the season ended and, and it's been a few months at this point, but was, was there this like moment of finally breathing for you? Like, man, you know, the marathon's over. I, you know, I've got my standing within the organization. Let me take a breath. Let me start the off season, have my birthday and everything. And then year two starts. Yeah, no, I would say for sure. Uh, you know, I kind of just took advice from a lot of the vets around in the locker room. They're like, look, uh, no matter how you're thinking, just, take time to, to rest, you know, recover, uh, get back to, you know, just really take time away from football. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I, I just took that because that's what all my friends that play in the NFL and everyone, like I said, in, in Dallas told me to do. And so I just took their advice to heart and um, really took like a month and a half of not doing anything football related. But then after that, it was like, okay, like then the anxiety and everything started picking up. I'm like, all right, I need to get back in the weight room. Freaking look back at the my film from last year so um I'm, we're i'm uh pretty much full swing right now into football right now and so it's just a matter of uh like i said i'm, I'm just ready to roll at this point what did you do because again the whole purpose here is to have people get to know you and actually i'll start there have you ever heard the term by now i'd be shocked if you haven't pet cat when it comes to the cowboys no i don't i don't know what that is so Pet cat is, is a term that Bill Parcells used to use. And he would talk about like um, somebody who was when training camp started kind of on the bubble, not necessarily like a first round pick and somebody who was really fighting for a roster spot and would say, that's my pet cat. It's something we do at blogging the boys every year when training camp comes around, who's your pet cat? And, you know, people line up and they okay. say this guy, that guy, whatever. So you were a lot of people's pet cat, like a lot of people saying, I think Francis Bernard is going to make the roster. And it was so interesting because training camp was this like secretive operation. There was a day you were like balling out, had the interception and everybody was like, I can't wait to see this and everything, like kind of feeling the justification of it all. And so, like, did you know that, that, that you are a low key, like a favorite player by a lot of Cowboys fans? No, I had no idea. <laughs> you are. But like, because people, it, it is the Cowboys have a really unique history with undrafted free agents, as I'm sure, you know, um, obviously, Tony Romo and Miles Austin, other people that have had, you know, some levels of success, Lucky Whitehead and now yourself. And so like, it is a very legitimate path within the Cowboys organization. And so was that was that ever something that, you know, like, I don't want to call it a chip on your shoulder, but something that you were like, you know what, I don't care how I got here. I got to make this roster because you did like you really made things hard on them when it came to building the overall thing to the point that they just had to keep you around. And now here you are. Yeah, no, I would say definitely, um, you know, as soon as I didn't go, I, I didn't get drafted. You know, I had a few teams call me with like day three, day two, and just things fell through for whatever reason. Um, you know, I was ultimately, I was pissed. I'm like, man, like right. that's, that's bull crap. I don't think any of these linebackers that went ahead of me are, are better than me. Um, and so, you know, just like you said, I had a, just the biggest chip on my shoulder to come out and, and just, you know, freaking strike fear into the Cowboys organization. And so the two days I got interceptions back to back, it was like everyone in the whole room was just kind of, and I was just like, dang, like this kid can really play. And I'm like, yeah, I'm, and I'm going to show you more if I get the opportunity. But, um, uh, yeah, I think that's interesting that there is a pet cat because, yeah, now that I think about it, there's guys like even I think Cole Beasley was undrafted. Right. Jeff Heath was undrafted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, there's some ballers. And um, as the season went on, as I got to know the history of it, that, that's I I, uh, I embrace the, the fact of being undrafted. And to this day, I'm going to forever, you know, embrace the fact of being undrafted forever. 
No, I think that that's well said. And I, it, I remember very vividly um, just because again, at the time it was, you know, only a handful of guys would do media availabilities every day. And I remember when Leighton went to the podium, he was asked like, who's impressing people. And he mentioned you and that like to the people who weren't like kind of following every single update that I, I don't know. Does, does something like that, um, go a long way in your eyes, like like somebody like Leighton Vandresh, who who is you know regarded uh, at the time as you know kind of the face of the defense and the face of the linebacker group. I mean, does that is that a different kind of compliment coming from him, kind of putting your name out there in a different way? Oh, absolutely. I think you know when I heard he said that and I see it in the minute, I'm like, dang. Like I think the next day, I'm just like, dang, bro. Thanks for shouting me out. <laughs> um, just because, like you said, you know, he's he's a class act and, you know, he, he's, he's what it means to be a cowboy. And, you know, I just try to um, follow in his footsteps and learn from, you know, vets like himself. But yeah, when he said that, I'm like, dang, okay. So I think after that, we became like, we became cooler and, you know, we've just been, been cool ever since. So that was dope of him. That's awesome. So again, the purpose here today is to get to know you, um, kind of who you are. You mentioned you took a month and a half or so off. You mentioned you picked up reading. Did you watch any great movies? Did you pick up any great shows? Are you a Marvel guy? Like, what what are your what you know? You a Call of Duty dude? Like, where, where's your free time go when you're not dealing with the family? When, when you kind of have just some some time for you specifically? Yeah, no, I'm uh, I I hadn't played video games for like two years, but since I had so much time on my hands, I jump back into playing video games i play I, you know i still play at night um, right. call of duty Warzone, um handle shinobi fb13 for the, the fans out there um but what else did i do for like two weeks i like did this um this cheat meal this cheat cheat eating thing so like for two weeks i would just eat nothing but junk so then i just had this this mindset to like eat junk for two weeks and then the rest of my time i'd feel sick for I did it for about like a week and I felt sick for probably, I don't even know, for like a whole month. I just didn't even want to eat like cookies <laughs> or like milkshakes or things like that. It was terrible. But <laughs> that's just something that I wanted to do because I didn't really eat anything like that during the season. But so that was in, that was fun. Um, I went home. I'm, I'm from Utah for, for those right. of you who don't know that I am from Utah. So I went home for two weeks, spent time out there. And then, yeah, I, I just been out here. Um, Ever since, so I've been out here since February, the beginning of February, and so about two months, yep. Are you a Utah sports guy? Like, you're a big jazz dude? You've been enjoying this season, or are you like now you like gravitating towards the Mavs, or like, what's your situation there? No, man, I'm not a jazz fan. So, I'm, I'm originally born in Southern California, and it's a lake I show. wasn't raised there, but my older siblings were. Lake show, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kobe era, forever. I mean, yeah, like that's hard to argue with, obviously. Um, I'm a Spurs fan. So like there's this like kind of, you know, legitimate respect there. Uh, and obviously like now, you know, in the last year, Lakers fans is there's a whole different sector of it in a, in a really awesome way. Um, so that's cool. Glad you got to go home. Glad you kind of got to experience things. Um, I'm curious what led to you wanted to do the Instagram Q&A where you just like people do this. I'm I'm famous. I'll do it. Like, actually, what? I'll, let me back up. What was the first moment where you were like, "I'm famous. I'm a <laughs> professional athlete." Like, what was the the first thing that that happened that you were like, "Holy crap!" Thing, things are a little bit different now. You know, I think it was when I was walking around at uh, just a star, and um, some like a couple of people came up to me like, "You're that guy with the long hair." Uh, 44, right? And I was like, oh, yep, that's me. I don't know. I, I just, I, I never really view myself as famous. But then when I get things like that happen, I'm like, okay, I guess all these fans here do know a little bit about football and whatnot. But yeah, I, th I think that's when I really realized that the Cowboys organization was, is a lot bigger than, than what I had thought. Because I, I kind of thought it was big, but I didn't realize it was big until, like I said, I started going out in the public people recognize me at just like restaurants and stuff. I'm like, this is crazy. So yeah. <laughs> That and you do have not everybody has like a like a thing like you're like a visible thing like your hair you know what I mean and so um, we we did take some questions from Instagram and so we'll get to that um, so um, but that's cool actually let's go ahead and go to our Instagram questions uh, we got ten rapid fire ones for you uh, we know you're a busy guy the first one comes to us from be more fifty two ninety five says what was your reaction when you were brought up from the practice squad you, that was something that everybody wanted to see for a long time so when it finally happened it was a big deal. 
Man, no, it, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'll, I'll say it here on, on the live. I, it brought me to tears just because I've been working my whole life to get to this point. And so when I got brought up, you know, I just was emotionally just like, day all my hard work paid off and now I'm here. But then I was just excited. Like when I got into the locker room, I saw my jersey. And I'm like, dang, like I really was just starstruck because I seen Dak and everyone else get ready for the game. And I'm like, this is dope. This is about to be fun. You mentioned in your Instagram Q&A that Dak was your favorite player. I thought that was really interesting. Um, do you feel that way? Because, I, I mean, I've never been in the NFL. Um, do you have a favorite? Like, would you call him that, your favorite player? I mean, because your friends, your teammates, you know, it's different than, like, you know, your average Cowboys fan calls him their favorite player. Like, what, what can you kind of elaborate on that? Yeah, I think uh... – I mean, favorite player that I know that I've seen right. day to day, I would say for sure. Um, just because, you know, it, he's just the epitome of a leader, you know, just kind of the first one in the building, last one to leave the building. Um, not afraid to talk to you. Like he knows me personally, not just who I am, but he's always actually asking how I'm doing, how my son's doing and me and my wife. I'm like, you know, things I just wouldn't think that he would know. But, uh, yeah, you know, and that, that itself just goes a long way. Um, and so for him to do just to be the kind of leader he is just makes him my favorite player. That's awesome. Sorry, my right, let's... Like, I got to watch him while I'm doing you're, this. You're good. Uh, next one uh, comes to us from West Coast Angel. Do you think you'll have a bigger role on the field compared to last year? Some of this I know is out of your control, but but just kind of your initial thoughts. Um, I mean, yeah, just like you said, it's it's out of my control. My goals definitely are to, are to have a bigger a role this year than I did last year. You know, that's something that I'm working towards and something that I believe I can, I can accomplish. You know, there have been some, uh, you know, I've had some meetings with, you know, our new defensive coordinator about th- some things. So, but like I said, it's still up to them to make those final decisions. Sure. Uh, so that kind of leads into this next question. Where does Dan Quinn plan to play? Yeah. Have you, I mean, like, I know you can't like, you know, give us the full X's and O's, but obviously it's a new defensive scheme. Some things are similar. This is similar to what the Cowboys did before you arrived. Um, do you have any kind of thoughts on this? This comes to us. Uh, this is an Instagram question. So you can't blame me. You can blame Instagram. Yeah, no worries. yeah I would say um, my role will be something similar to what I did last year as far as playing the mic, but there's a, some twists to, the scheme. And so, um, like, yeah, just like I said, I'll, it'll be something very similar to what I did last year, playing the mic role. Right on. Um, well, well, your goals for next season. But if we had to put like a, besides win the Super Bowl, like, you know, you want to be a pro bowl or all pro, like you've got those things. Do you have like, um, like a, a measurable goal? Like, I don't know, like number of tackles or number of turnovers forced. Do you have any, any kind of goal like that? Do you write it down? Do you have any specific goal in that capacity? Yeah, I got a couple goals. Um, you know, I got a huge goal for special teams. I want to, uh, I want to triple my special team tackles from this last year to be one of the, if not the most, uh, to lead the league in special team tackles. And then I want to be able to start in a couple games this next year too. So those those are some big goals I have written down and I'm working towards. Right on, Bones Fossil probably pretty pumped about that goal. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, what would you say is the best attribute about your game? I say two things. I think just the, my overall instinctiveness of being able to sniff out the football and be able to, you know, use my IQ to you know when to shoot, shoot and go make a play, when not to. And then um, I got, you know, I, I got good, good short area quickness. And so within, you know, 20, 25 yards, I can, I can chase down guys that, that can run 4-4, 4 40s. And so it's a matter of the angle I take uh, to get there. You know, that's, that's all that, 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 that plays in factor too. Right. We talked about that 40 time, of course. Um, how this, this was a real question that we pulled. I promise you. Um, how would do you style your hair on a daily basis? I'm glad you brought the hair up. Obviously, um, you know, it's something that I imagine takes some time and effort. Like what's the, the standard daily routine? Yeah. So just daily, I usually just put it up in a bun. <laughs> but I wash my hair twice a week. And so the days I wash it, um, like today, I just got done washing it. I'm going to leave it out uh, just to let it breathe, you know, get some good uh, good nutrients and air up in there, moisture. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's okay. pretty much it. 
Well done. Um, who is your favorite all-time Cowboys player? And you, you mentioned learning about the team. Uh, maybe you've, you've learned about them. Maybe it's a fame, you know, all-time Cowboys linebacker. But, you know, you mentioned Dak in terms of guys you know. But what about historic Cowboys players? Uh, Emmett Smith. I, I, growing up, I was a big, big running back fan. And um, I would watch his film a lot just because he just – I thought he could do it all, not just – juke you out but he could truck you uh he had great hands out of the backfield and so you know i was i was a big fan of emmett smith right on we got three more um you you mentioned that you switched jersey numbers to 53 uh you wore 44 last year i'll be honest i'm not a fan of linebackers in the 40s uh just feels unnatural i like the 50s so good on you going to 53 why 53 uh two reasons i got two really good friends who are 44 in the nfl already and so I just wanted to change it up because of that. And then other than that, I just liked the number three. And so I wanted to, you know, they gave me the opportunity to be 53. So I took it. So you were 13 um, at Utah. Like if, if I don't know how much you're paying attention to this, but the NFL might allow linebackers among other positions to have numbers that, that start at one. So you could have three or 13, um, three Garrett Gilbert has, um, and Michael Gallup obviously has 13, but if you got to that point somehow, some way, would you want to wear three or 13 if it was allowed? Oh yeah. I'd, I'd definitely go 13 for sure. If, uh, Michael would let me. I'd be like, "Come on, Mike, just give me 13. You can go, whatever else you want." But <laughs> if yeah, if it was permitted and it, it, if I could do it, I'd do it. Right on. Okay, two more. Uh, what are your thoughts about Dan Quinn? Just kind of takeaways. There's a lot to go. You guys have a lot of work to do together. Obviously, you mentioned you had a couple of meetings with him. Were you impressed? Were you not impressed? I imagine you were. Um, is he a cool dude? Does he relate to you? Do you guys text? Maybe you play like the the iPhone like pool games or something like. What, what's your relationship like with Dan Quinn so far? <laughs> Uh, I like him. I, you know, when he got hired, he reached out and just said he wanted to get to know me, you know, and like my game and ex- excited about me. Um, the best thing I like about him is, you know, he really takes his time to, to – he's taking the time to get to know me and getting to know a lot of the players, you know, just outside of football. You know, he really wants to build – he wants to build that foundation so then, you know, we can trust him and we can really, you know, feel him. But the other thing I really like about it too, you know, I think he's probably re- – the first one in the building every single day and the, you know one of the last with the league because i one of the two two of the days i thought i was super early and you know going later and there's a guy that's like just getting done with his work and i'm like dang what the heck what time did you get here he's like you did just like casually said like five o'clock i'm like well <laughs> that's pretty early my guy but yeah so that that's what that, those are the things i like about him Right on. Um, last one um, comes to us from somebody who I think knows the answer. Um, I know a lot of you guys uh, frequent this place, but who is your favorite physical therapist? Who is your favorite physical therapist? Uh, comes to us. I think her, I think it's pronounced Kessia. I could be wrong there, uh, uh, but Kasia. she <laughs> Kessia. Uh, so it's my bad. Uh, but um, she uh, she responded in our in our questions. Shout out to Kessia. No, Kessia's dope. I've had Kessia. For the past three weeks, work on my knee. But yeah, shout out to Casey. But then also, Erica from uh, Fourth Quarter Recovery was working w- with me throughout the, the season as well. But yeah, both of them are great. That's awesome. What's the like the process of your physical therapy? Like, how many? How much of your day at home? is spent doing things that they tell you to do or they teach you to do. I mean, like, is it, cause I have to imagine, it's not just like you go into the facility and you do like, you got to constantly, like you wake up, maybe even if like you accidentally fall asleep and take a nap, like you got to wake up and do different things. Is that kind of the lifestyle? Yeah. It's, you know, for me, you know, I'm sure it is for a lot of the athletes too. I'm always doing something every day. Like there's stretches that I I have to do just to stay on top of my, my body every single day. Um, if I'm just sitting around I'll just like get on the ground and do some stretches for wh- whatever I need, you know, that's feeling tight at the time. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a daily process. Even on your off days when like, <laughs> sorry, <You're good. laughs> well, for those of you that don't know, I got, I got a son who's crazy, but yeah, I'd say it's an everyday process. That's awesome. Well, we'll let you get back to your son. Uh, Francis, we're so happy we were able to get to know you and hopefully people came away uh, learning more about you. Do you have any final thoughts? Uh, do you want to be the guy that says the Cowboys are going to win the Super Bowl and then have the hot take that like goes all over the world? Or do you just want to let people know um, kind of what you're all about? I mean, you know, it's going to be a couple of months before um, obviously football season's back, but I think people are really excited to see you in year two. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd say we're going to be contenders for sure. Uh, I'll, I'll let the play you the talking, but again, thank you for having me on. 
And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm so grateful to be a cowboy. And it's been awesome. Right on, man. Appreciate it. This, uh, we'll have this go out um, tomorrow. So really appreciate you taking the time to join us. And, and I know, don't worry about your son, everything. That was cool. People love to hear and see that kind of stuff. <laughs> All right, for sure. <laughs> Sweet, man. Appreciate it. Have a good week.